We back with the busy boy out here. Oh shit, my bad. That's right. We got the boy Mike, Mike Ray in the building, dog. Sure, it's me, the Michael. Long, long time no see. I feel like every time, every time we see each other nowadays, dude, it's a little unfortunate. But that's I feel like how life goes sometimes. It's the way it's been going. Um, how was your Austin trip? Austin trip was good. Yeah, it was nice and fulfilling. Everything you wanted out of it. Oh yeah, it wasn't like oh we did this and we did that and we you know but it was. It was everything I wanted it to be. So I, I mean, hell, even just getting out of, like, you know what I'm saying, little old Laporte for a few days, bro, honestly, it just kind of feels good. It's a little, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just feels good getting away from, I guess, like your hometown and, like, just where you stay at on a daily basis. No, a yeah, it was. Basis. Nice little drive out there. It was, uh, it was a nice little time. What time did y'all get back uh, the day y'all came back? Day we got back. Was it late or was it, like, still pretty early in the day? We, on our last day, we wanted to, like, still do some stuff. So, we went to a couple record stores and whatnot. Um, so oh, we for real? Damn. Mm -hmm, so, we uh, actually got a, a George Jones record for a dollar. So a dollar? A dollar. What the fuck? I haven't played it yet, so I don't know if it's, like... If it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, I don't know if it's good or not, but uh. it, it looked... I, I checked it after I bought it. It looked fine. So, no mm -hmm. scratches or gashes or anything but um i think we got home around like five five or seven something okay. like that i don't remember i uh speaking of records i literally just got um i just got my most recent record uh it was a vinyl and uh is, is that what you mean by record is it a vinyl mm -hmm. okay okay um the most recent record I got was uh, Dua Lipa, the Radical Optimism album. Mm. I pre-ordered that uh, from her website. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> that motherfucker's there, dude. Have you heard any of her new album or no? Mm -mm. Fuck, uh, no. Ooh. Dua Lipa's not on my radar. That boy there. I apologize. What about uh, no. a different, a different strokes for different folks? Hey, um, you can stroke me differently. Huh? Huh? <laughs> this motherfucker <laughs> here, bro. <laughs> hey, all these people seeing how gay you is right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you ever listen to that one album I told you to or no? Um, Avenged Sevenfold? Yeah. No. Damn <laughs> you, dude. Damn. No, not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I really want you to listen to that album because I feel like you out of you out of all the people I feel like I know I feel like could appreciate that album. I would appreciate for, the most. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I have you heard been, anything from them before like that you like like or you haven't even really heard of them? Uh, no, I have. Okay. Um, I've heard their music, not anything that I've really liked. Oh, man, I have to go check that out. Yeah. Like, nothing that deep. But it's not, you know, the old, older stuff is not bad. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're pretty well liked, yeah. um, especially their older stuff. Yeah, their older stuff, for but sure. I've been on, um, I've been on a Slipknot grind recently. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's not bad either, dude. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to Iowa. I've never, uh, is that an album? Mm-hmm. I've Just never. their second album? I've never dove into a... Uh, Slip not that much, but they have really, really good songs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you just know they're a good band. It's just yeah. like one of those artists that like I have a couple songs from them, but I've never actually like just mm -hmm. really dabbled into them. Right. Oh my god, bro! I just need the crap out of the table. <laughs> <laughs> that man there. Um, all right, man. Well, one of the things I want to talk about today was you seen the um, moves the Houston Texans made mm -hmm. this off season? Or sh have I seen it? Yeah, dude. The, 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 the I was there. I was in Nick's ear like this. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Stephon Diggs, bro. <laughs> Joe Mixon. All uh, right. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's. It's just. I think about it. Like ever since it happened, it still doesn't feel real to me. You know what I mean? Is like, right? I, I feel like it's one of those like, like I need to pinch myself kind of moments because I don't think I've ever remember the Houston Texans having a team that was this talented before. Like they had talent on their teams before in the past, but mm -hmm. like. To have the players that they do now and like mm -hmm. the quarterback we have now like pfft. game changer like our most talented teams in the past have been people we've scouted or drafted or we've never like we never really assembled mm -hmm. a really real like a really strong team like this the 2000 the 2011 team the first team that ever went to the playoffs mm -hmm. won the division um that team they assembled kind of like how they did this one through free agency but 
It was mainly for defensive players that I mm-hmm. remember. Yep. I don't remember any offensive players they got picked up like how they did this offseason with Joe Mixon. Defense, and, yeah. You know what I mean? Even the uh, Ben Skorik, I think, is a, the wide receiver that we got from the Rams. Mm-hmm. The one who like whose last – J.J. Watt, want to watch J.J. Watt's last game, <laughs> yeah. bro. He just – Leveled Just him. leveled that, that man, funny. Dude. And I'm sure if you put them two together, like side by side, J.J. Watt like probably <laughs> towers over him, dude. Yeah. You know Not what I mean? Not even funny. Yeah. But uh, so it was Jonathan Joseph. Yep. J. Joe. Uh, Daniel Manning and a corner named Jason Allen mm-hmm. that we got in 2011. Jason Allen, I can't remember where he came from. He might have came from the Bengals too, but Jonathan Joseph, I think, came from the Bengals. I remember that. And then Daniel Manning came from the, uh, the Bears, I believe. Those players were very uh, vital pieces to that 2011 team, yeah. dude. And they were a big reason why we – went as far as we did you know and and uh but you haven't seen anything like that since i feel like you know and then what and not on this level yeah no not on this level because these players are still relatively young and still and Mm -hmm. somewhat like and still in the prime of their careers really you know what i mean Mm -hmm. they're not so uh they're not older i mean they're older but they're like considered veteran players they're Mm -hmm. not anything that's like washed he's got like two three years left it's not like you know, I hate, I hate to say it, but let's just be real. You know, call a spade a spade. Uh, Ed Reed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When we signed Ed Reed, it was like, bro. Yeah, that was not. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> that could have signed me, bro. I could have played just as I could have I could have played just as good as in that year. Suit up, then. <laughs> um, but Ed Reed's obviously a Hall of Famer, dude. You know what I mean? It's just a uh, rough year, and that was a year the Texans yeah. went what two and fourteen. Two and fourteen. Won the first two games of the season. Yeah. And the, and the first two games of the season were like nail biting games. Like mm-hmm. I we remember. came back. Like it was like, dude. Like oh man, dude, this Texans team is different. <laughs> and I it's remember. like you know what? They really are different, bro. Because <laughs> we opened up. I think we opened up the year against the Chargers. Yep. And it was like it should not be this close right now. No. Nah. Well, it was twenty eight to like seven. We, was it? Yeah, we went down, dude. We went down like bad. We ended up coming back. I don't remember that. Brian Cushing got a pick six in that game off uh, off Phillip Rivers, and he took it back to the house, and that, I think, tied the game up. And then mm. we ended up winning that game by, like, maybe three points. Yeah, I remember it was very close. I don't remember being down. Yeah, we are down. And, and then we won the next game. The next game in overtime. And we were, like, against you know, the Titans. Win, you know, two wins is two wins. Lost the Lost rest of the exactly, year. Exactly, bro. <laughs> How does that happen, dude? But in every Fuck. week, every week, week in, week out, me and my dad were on that couch Same. watching the Texans lose. Same. Bro. It was rough. That's was the last rough. year I've ever uh that's the last year I ever sat down in front of the TV knowing the Texans were probably not that great. That's the last year I sat down and watched every single game like that. I have not done that in I did that the last time I did that was the twenty twenty season when we had Deshaun Watson and it mm-hmm. was COVID. The that last was the bad last year. yeah, that was like yeah. one of the last one of the last bad years that we had because twenty uh that was twenty 2020, twenty, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. No, I meant the last bad year with him. Oh yeah, yeah. Because so, he was still good, nineteen. He's you know, we yeah, were. Yeah, really he was good. still good during that year. Yeah. And then uh then we got Davis Mills and then, you know, that stuff happened. But um fast forward to now where we're at, uh I'm very excited, man, because I don't even – like, bro, we have, like, three number one wide receivers on our team. Like, I know. Tank Dell almost had 1,000 yards last year if he didn't get hurt. And literally, how many weeks did he still have left? Like, Oh, he had a good amount of the season left, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty five sure. Five or six weeks Dude, or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I have to look this up now. And he was already at, what, 800, seven-something yards? I think yards? six or 700 yards at that point. That's insane. And he was – he didn't really start coming along until, like, the third game, I feel mm-hmm. like. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But also, like, the first – I think, of like, the first game, they didn't really throw to him a lot either. No. Nah. Which was – that was – I was really questioning because something about him, I just felt like he was going to – he was going to be that for us. Like a Tyreek Hill type player. He got hurt in week 13 in the first quarter. So it's week 13. I think there's 18 weeks. One of yeah. them is a bye week. So, uh, what, he four had weeks. four weeks. And he had 600 yards. And he was probably – tank. it's Tank Dell. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, they they and didn't really have anyone else, I feel like, to throw to after that in a way, except for Nico. Except for Nico. And Dalton every now and then. And, no, I mean, Noah Brown was putting in his work when oh, he was. True, but true. He got hurt. Yeah, he got hurt. And, and then, slowed down a little bit, yeah. Every, everyone else didn't step up like I thought they would. Mm-mm. 
But CJ stepped up like we thought yeah, he would. He did. He did. CJ killed it, bro. I feel like CJ is able to – he's like one of those quarterbacks that can just make any receiver good, I feel like. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? All he has to do is just put that ball where it needs to be, and it's like it's up to them to catch it. He's going to bring – did you see that clip? Like the first first day of OTA when he, he threw – The no look? No, no, no. Oh, the fucking uh, – the, Like the basket toss to, to Mitch. John, yeah. He dropped, and he dropped it, bro. Yeah, I imagine him being like, "Fuck, dude, I should have caught that one." Because that was a that was a really, really good throw. Dude, that was a good throw. And then I seen he threw a no look pass at one point in the in in one of the practices. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like, yeah, bro. So you just it just gives you that excitement for the season, man. And, and yeah. like you really have something. And then the new jerseys and mm-hmm. the, the new, new logo jerseys. and stuff. Like yeah. I feel outdated with this hat on, but I love this hat. So <laughs> probably gonna yeah. keep wearing it, but. I got to get some of that new merch, dude, because mm-hmm. some of that new merch is sick as hell. Oh, I'm going to. We should go down to NRG one day. Is it they, every, have like, they have, like, a team store there, I think. And you're able to go, like, every week there, huh? I'm like, every sure. day of the week you can go up there and visit? I know at Minute Maid they do. There's one, like, off of one of the streets downtown. Mm-hmm. The team store opens up to the street, so you can just walk in through the street. What the hell? Yeah, it's, well, it's, like, there's doors, obviously, but you just walk in off the sidewalk, and then... um you can literally look into the stadium, but the doors are locked to the stadium. Mm. It's like, yeah, y'all can't come in here, but y'all can come in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all can come spend some money. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, and, um, I'm pretty sure the team shop at NRG is like that too. Did you see the schedule for the Texans by any chance? Of course. I have it saved on my phone, actually. Oh, can you pull it up real quick? Yeah, I can. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, bro. All right, hold on, wait. Duh, right? Me recording on my phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Texans. I know the schedule. I know they play the Cowboys um, November eighteenth because we're planning on the, we're planning on going to that game. So week one, Texans at Colts. Yeah, that's gonna be a really good opener. It's gonna be, good it's gonna be tough. And I think uh, Anthony Richardson might be ready too. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be like a yeah, it's gonna be a tough game. Those games against the Colts are always tough. Always, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't really remember ever. They've always been consistently like our number one competitor. Yeah, I agreed. And then, um, but they've always been fucking Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck, and now Anthony, Anthony Richardson. Richardson. Yeah, fuck those guys. <laughs> <laughs> they had Philip Rivers for a year, remember? So Philip Rivers, I remember they that. they did go through something with the quarterbacks a little mm-hmm. bit, but I'm. They just Jacoby Brissett, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they finally were just like, bro, we've had enough. We've had quarterback come in and out of here every year, and they managed to be a competitive team still. Mm-hmm. Like I know Chris Ballard, the GM for the Colts, honestly, he's done a really good job, like building that team to be able to be competitive, like year yeah. in and year out without a consistent quarterback. Like that is just and the AFC. I mean, the AFC South. You know, we're the laughing stock of the league for 10, 15 years, oh, yeah. but. We're starting to become one of the best divisions, um, divisions in yeah. the league for sure. The Jags, uh, it's it's weird with the Jags. I feel like the Jags always got like, it's like, dude, they're doing really good. And then they just slow down and then they pick up and then they slow mm-hmm. down. You know what I mean? I feel like they're a very inconsistent team. They have all the pieces mm-hmm. around them, I feel, but I don't but know. I don't know what it is. They're still, man, you, you blow them out, shut them out, or they could give you 40, 50. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just so inconsistent. You just don't know. But they're dangerous. Yeah. And I, honestly, dude, I'm so glad uh, we got uh, – I just can't – when we drafted C.J. Stroud, I was like, bro, let's go. Like, I was super mm-hmm. excited. He was the one I wanted, you know. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm a big Ohio State fan, so I was like, dude, I want, I want C.J. C.J.'s going to mm-hmm. be nice. you seen that last game that he played against Georgia in the playoffs that they lost. He was killing it, dude, just throwing – Mm-hmm. Like throwing the football everywhere and anywhere he wanted, I feel like, and he was just doing the damn thing. And I feel like that game really showed a lot of people, like, yo, he's more ready than you think he is. Because mm-hmm. the Georgia defense at that point was a really good defense. Tough. They're still a good team now, so it's like that tells you something. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm glad it translated as well as it did because I don't think anyone could have predicted how well he was going to do and no. have the season that he did. I saw people reacting to the draft and. I don't know if it was, like, Texans fans or if it was um, people that were fans of a different team that maybe wanted CJ so that, that they reacted this way. But whenever we got CJ at two, they were like, what? Like, they were all, pit, they were all pissed. Yeah. So that's why 
they, they didn't have any Texans gear on, so yeah. oh. they could have been someone, a team, another team, you know, another team fan that maybe. wanted him. Yeah. So either way, I mean, they felt the same. Or well, if that's the case, and it's it is how we're thinking about it, then they wanted they, they said the same thing about JJ mm-hmm. when that guy. Dropped I remember there was people on like, and there was one dude I remember that apparently that I seen this on the news. JJ Watt had a. Uh, yeah, I guess he had seen this clip, and it was like the one dude was like, man, I'm so excited we got J.J. Watt. Like, he really wanted uh, – he was excited that we got J.J. from Wisconsin. And mm-hmm. he was like, that's the guy I wanted. And then the rest of the, like, fans that were going around were like, man, we shouldn't have got him. We should have got so-and-so. They were saying yeah, that we should have got um, another player who's not even playing in the league you know, anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess there's not a lot of players that from that in, draft. Yeah, we're in JJ Watt's class that we're playing, but didn't last that long. But didn't last as long as JJ, and mm-hmm. weren't as uh, didn't have the same career as him, the same impact. Mm-hmm. But I remember JJ Watt meeting up with that fan like a year or two after. Uh, I guess like he had seen that clip, and um, I can't remember. I think he was just like thank you and like told them how much he appreciated it and stuff. Because I think it's. it's Probably overwhelming for people coming into the league, young men coming into the mm-hmm. league, having that kind of like a pressure on them. Mm-hmm. And he was homegrown Wisconsin all the way through, all so way through, yeah. you know he probably always felt love, yeah. um, no matter where he played, because he played there all the time. Yeah, people exactly. that knew him, and then he came here and he was getting hate. It's probably not something that he was used to. But yeah. But he handled it probably as well as anyone could. Mm-hmm. I mean, shit, that's not... I, I think it's like that with a, a, a lot of things in... Uh, I guess a lot of things in life, whatever career path you want to do, like, people are always going to have opinion about anything you do. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And that's just the way the world is. Like, ain't nothing you could really do about it. No. It's not always going to be stuff you want to hear. It's not always going to be positive. Um, and I think at the end of the day, you just got to learn, like, how JJ did and how most people, I think, that are successful at their crafts, like... You just got to remain true to yourself. And I think as long as you understand where it is you want to go and you work at it every single day, I think you'll eventually get there. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin Hart was talking about that recently. And he was saying, like, if you keep, like, just keep trying and you keep building on the things that you want to build on, he was like, um, you're eventually going to get there. He was like, you're never not going to get there because he was like, the only way you don't get there is if you give up. Mm. That is the only way that you're never going to... Guaranteed. Yeah, exactly. It's guaranteed. But you always have that chance if you're constantly trying. Yep. Which is kind of how I see this, too. You know what I mean? And his his impact was immediate, too. Who, JJ? JJ. Yeah. yeah. That rookie year, you know? He didn't have as many sacks as he wanted, but he was still getting a tackles for loss. He didn't have as many snaps played as I'm sure he would have wanted to, mm-hmm. but he also wasn't in... Uh, who was it? Uh... I think Wade Phillips was saying he was like, I mean, he was good. He was in shape, but he wasn't in the shape that he could have been. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then that next year was like, bro, he looked completely different. Yeah. You know what I mean? His arms were more defined. He was way quicker. Mm-hmm. He, I remember that little year, chubby want. Yeah, right. <laughs> bro, you should have seen how they did him dirty in Madden 13, dog. Mm-hmm. They did him dirty in Madden 13 or like Madden 25, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Bro, he was so round and like <laughs> built. He was built like like a defensive tackle, dude. <laughs> like, dude. Oh like, you know, God. Vince Wolf work? Yeah. Yeah, he was built like him on, on, Madden, <laughs> on Madden 25, nah, that's bro. Foul. Yeah, I'm about, I'm going to put that clip up in here, dude. But it was pretty <laughs> like, dog. It was like even when J.J. Watt wasn't how he looked in 2012, he never looked like that. No, you know what not, I mean? It like, wasn't that bad. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, I'm super excited for that one. That the the, the this upcoming season, it's gonna be great. Uh, very tough schedule. So much fun to watch. Very tough schedule. Uh, we got the Packers. We got the Bills. Not only are we playing like really, really good teams. Really good teams. The the timing of our schedule. As far as what? Like like the games like and Christmas and, like the Christmas oh, yeah. Day like that. Mm-hmm. We play like three games in what a week and a half, two weeks or something like that. Yeah, three games in like. Let me see. That's that's insane. Yeah, it's like three games in a week. Two games in like four days or some shit like that. Insane. I was like, bro, what? How is that even okay? That's not. It's not okay, it's not. bro. Our guys are going to be fucked Yeah, up. dude. Going into the playoffs, too. That, to me, is like. And they were just talking about. They're talking it? about extending games. Yeah. Uh, adding less preseason games and more regular season games. And, and they wanted to, like, make it longer or something so they didn't. You know, player safety, they don't have to play as much, blah, blah, blah. And then they do this. Yeah. They contradict themselves a lot. And at the end of the day, how they see it is it's 
I say how they when I'm when I'm referring to they I'm referring to like fucking uh, Roger Goodell mm-hmm. and the people that work around him and they build the schedule and all this stuff. They're in it, they're in the entertainment business. You right. know what I mean? So they're there to entertain people and they mm-hmm. want to keep it going as much as they can. But at the same time, it's like, what's the reason? How are we being? How are we being entertained here? We're being entertained by watching these players play. Mm-hmm. Okay. If they all had, man, I hate to just throw names out there like that, but if they all had Brian Hoyers as quarterbacks in the league, how fun would the league be to watch? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No, like, like Patrick Mahomes is just as good as Brian Hoyer. He's not able to do the things that he does now. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just a very basic, like, you know what I'm saying? Brian Hoyer is like a pocket passer. Mm-hmm. Not great, but yeah, like, he'll get the ball down the exactly. field. Exactly. And I think the, the, where I'm getting at with that was like the entire league is made up of all these players with their personalities and the things that they have and things that the fan base likes about them. Like it's all entertainment. And if that player gets hurt because you're playing 25 games, I mean, I know you're not playing 25, but it's like y'all are adding, <laughs> y'all are adding more games, dude, to just. I don't know. Beat the players up more, dog. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Like uh, Terrell Bernard, he. Um, I don't. I'm not gonna sit there and say that this has anything to do with the games, uh, like how, how long the season is. But he didn't play in the playoff game that they had. Mm-hmm. And who knows? Maybe if they had like one less game than they did before, he may have not gotten hurt on a certain play. You know what I mean? And he was able to play in that playoff game. Like I don't know things like that. Like. I don't, I'm not a fan. As much as I love football and as much as I have a passion for it, I'm not a fan of them extending the season any longer just because of the players. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And especially because, like, like you said, we're going to be beat the fuck up, bro. That is at the end of the season. That, that, <coughs> that, um, yo, you good, bro? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, drink, drink your water, dog. Drink your water. <laughs> um, at the end of the year is, we have the Dolphins, the Chiefs, and the Ravens at the end of the year. And the last game of the season is the Titans. That's, those are three really good teams right there. And, yeah, we got the Cowboys on November 18th. I think it's on Monday. It's on Monday night, which is sure. awesome. I'll be up there in Dallas. Bro, we have the – I better be. We have the Bills. Look, this is where it just gets tough. Arlington. This is where it just gets tough. We got the, the Raven, yeah. Yeah, we got the Bills over here, uh, the Patriots over there, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, Packers over there in uh, Lambo, I'm worried about what, that. What, what date is that? That's October 20th. So it's oh cool. hell no, it's They're gonna, gonna be freeze. Pre- <laughs> it's gonna be pretty cold at that point too. Yeah, um, bro, it's gonna be negative something over there, and they're gonna come back to Houston. It's gonna be like. 70 but 99 percent humidity so it's gonna be like 98 degrees they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna melt dude they're gonna defrost on the way back <laughs> um so this is where it starts getting tough at, like it's the packers the colts at home the jets at home oh, i'm sorry the packers over there Lambeau. the colts at home okay. the jets in new york with Aaron Rodgers, fucking met life on october 31st 7 15 it's on a on a primetime game uh, the Lions over here. The don't, li- don't we have a Halloween game? The Jets is the Halloween game. Jets is on thirty first. Yeah, um, that's cool. The Lions over here. Mm-hmm. The that's play, gonna be tough. Play the Cowboys in Arlington. Boo. And then Cowgirls. The Titans, the Jags, and then the Dolphins, the Chiefs, the Ravens. That's tough. Yeah, dude. We all play what five? As long as the Jags are not that's playing insane. well next year. That'll be a good – the Titans and Jags will be a good break. <laughs> I, think, I think that this is a good um, – I think that this is a good test for the Houston Texans and the team that they have now yeah. because as good as they were last year, I feel, that they, I feel that they got way better this offseason, and I feel like they're a good enough yeah. team to be able to compete with those teams and be mm-hmm. able to be like, yeah, we can win our division and we could still have a good record. We might be able to even be like – far as like number two seed number one seed you know that's right because i feel like the man teams, we like, were a couple games if we didn't win some of those games that we should or if we didn't lose some of the games that we should have won is that right yeah yeah um like the that panthers game mm-hmm. that falcons game the jets game 
Jets game. Jets game for sure. That CJ, was embarrassing. Yeah. CJ got that Jets defense is really good. Really but good. Shouldn't CJ have been like got that. CJ got beat up that game. He got he he got concussed that game. He was out for two weeks after mm-hmm. that game. So it was like that that Cleveland game that mm-hmm. I went to got dog walked. Oh my god, I remember. Yeah, before we played him in the playoffs. Didn't even score on offense. Dude, yeah, it was absolutely horrible. Or I could, at least to the end. I, I think. couldn't believe that that happened. That game was uh I couldn't believe we got as embarrassed as we did, especially with like Joe Flacco in there. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, he was playing good. He won't come back player of the year, mm-hmm. but I thought we were There's away no way. I thought we were a way better team. And then we ended up showing how good of a team we were in the playoffs when yeah. it really mattered. Uh-huh. So that's all that mattered. That's all that mattered, yeah. It, it felt good to beat the brakes off of them. Dog, the <laughs> yeah, after that, like yeah. That. Because I feel like CJ only scored, what, two touchdowns or three touchdowns that game? And the defense scored two touchdowns? I think it was I think it was three. Who, CJ, right? I think so. Yeah, because I feel like, God, dude, he was just killing it that game. Like, there was on like one of the first drives of the game where he hit Nico Collins on this route where Nico had to adjust to it, but he gave the ball enough, like, airtime for Nico to, like, mm-hmm. adjust to it. And it was crazy because it was like the ball's coming over here, and he, like, looks, and then he just turns around and catches it. Like, if he had thrown a – I can't say that it wasn't a good football, but I think even C.J. Stroud himself knows that he could have led him into the end zone with that throw. Mm-hmm. But still, nonetheless, a great throw. Like, that's the – those are the kind of things that he could probably work on, and that's, like, to go from – Oh, it's a it's a fifty yard fifty yard in the air completion, and now we're like in the red zone, versus like it's a fifty yard touchdown. Yeah, versus like a fifty five yard touchdown. Yeah, like that's it. Like that that's the only complaint. Yeah, really, really good season. Exactly. Yeah, you can't you can't be upset at that. Yeah. You know what I mean. And those are the only things. Is I I think I noticed that a little bit was that. Just trying to lead them on, like that could have been a touchdown yeah. right now. I think what he's, uh, what he was doing with certain throws, I, at least what I think. I'm not no fucking evaluator, no quarterback pro or nothing, but um, I think he's trying to like uh, just put it in a spot where they can catch it and they're safe. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if I try and lead them here, maybe the safety will get to him quick enough to where he could just level them. And I feel like C.J. Stroud cares about his players enough to be like, I am about to put them in a position where they can get just messed up. He doesn't want them to be in a, here comes a boom at it. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Dude. Oh, my God. Some of those are gnarly, bro. Some of those are gnarly as fuck, dude. Um, so it's off topic completely, but um, I think it's about time we moved on. Um, I seen Iron Claw the other day. <gasps> you finally watched it? Finally watched Iron oh, Claw. Shit. When, when, what's the other day? Uh, the, other, the other day is like probably at the end of last month, so like maybe okay. uh, <laughs> four weeks ago. Because <laughs> we're already in the middle. We're at the end of May already, dude. Mm-hmm. God, the months fly, fly by, but mm-hmm. if work don't make it feel like it's going so slow. Um, uh, me and Mitch watched it. I seen... Um, here? Oh, here, yeah. Here, here, here in the, in the, in the living room. We're just chilling and then... Uh, we're just looking for something to watch. We're like, man, we haven't watched anything in a while. Like, what do we watch? Um, she wanted to restart the Hobbit series, but I was like, because I watched them first, and then I didn't really remember them. So I was like, man, I need to watch them because mm-hmm. the last movie that I watched, I was like, man, it's so good. And yes, those movies are awesome. I love the Hobbits. Right. Um, I started rewatching that as well, but um, I was like, man, I don't feel like watching that right now because it is a three-hour movie or like a two and a half-hour movie. Mm-hmm. They're long movies, so. I was like, I just want to, uh, I want to watch something different that we haven't watched yet. You know, there has to be something on. We have Peacock, Max, Hulu, Everything. all these different yeah. things. So it's like we got. There's a lot of stuff out there if you look. Oh yeah, yeah. And then, sure enough, she was like, I was like, I think Iron Claw is on Max, right? And she's like, Yeah. I was like, Do you want to like, do you want to watch that? I felt like she was gonna say no, because a lot of times I suggest movies and she's she like, Nah. No. Yeah. Um, but she was like, Yeah, let's watch it. We watched it, bro. Uh, cried, <laughs> and yeah. um, r- really, really good movie, and I'm so glad it's an A24 film as mm-hmm. well. But that makes it that much better to me. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but I I love A24 films and like the way they've gone with their films and just their films are really good. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad they're. I feel like they're starting to get the recognition that they deserve. Uh, but dude, really good movie. Really good production company. Yeah, man, I saw it with. Uh, first time with my dad back when it came out, December time. Yeah, of, um, a couple, few months ago. I wonder how it did in box. 
Uh, it did good. Yeah. Yeah. It was getting a lot of hype because I mean I, I was I was excited for it just because I tried to stay in tune with um, all all things that A twenty four puts out. But mm-hmm. um, I told my dad about it because you know him growing up, he's been watching wrestling since the seventies, and um, he was a big fan of, of the NWA. Uh, what, bro? Forty five point two million is what it, what it did at box. You want to know the budget for the film? How much? Fifteen point nine mil. Yeah, I thought so. It killed it. That's insane. It killed it. Yeah. And there was a Jeremy Allen White, mm-hmm. uh, the guy who played um, the oldest brother, Mike, I believe. Mm-hmm. No, Mike was the one. Was Mike the one that took the? I'm gonna bleep it out. But Mike, was Mike the one that took the? Uh, I think so. Michael. Yeah. Yeah. He was the youngest. David is one I'm talking about. David, David is the second or third oldest. David. Mm-hmm. The oldest was the little one that died, Jack. Yeah, the smallest one. And then it's Kevin. Okay, Kevin was the one. Kevin was the one that was sick in Tokyo or Japan. That, that's David. That's David. Mm-hmm. And oh. he was the third oldest. Oh, Kevin's the first oldest. Then. Kevin's the oldest that's alive. Yeah. Well, Wait. he's the only one that's alive now. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. Sorry, Kevin. No, no shit. Um. Really good film. Really good. And they actually had a they had another brother in real life. Who oh, yeah. My mom told me about this. She, uh, yeah. I told her about the movie. Go ahead. That he also killed himself. Yeah. So it's even worse than what was in the movie. Damn, bro. Even more loss. God, that's... Insane. Yeah. And honestly, in that, in that one part where Kevin's like telling uh, his wife that he's going to go to a hotel... Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't want to stay with them, and then she like tries to like go up to him. She's like, "Okay, well, you know," and he's like, "Stop! Like, you're gonna get it." Yeah, you know what I mean. Like him showing how worried he was that this curse, that this curse, and he genuinely believed it. Mm-hmm. And it, I guess it would be hard not to. You know what I mean? It's hard not to. Man, he was there for how, how many brothers? Six, six boys. Yeah, uh, like IRL, and they all died. And he was there for all of them. Yeah, he was there when his when the oldest one died. And he was there when all the rest of them did, too. He witnessed all of them. That's so sad, dude. It's crazy. And especially, like, I don't know how true it is, but when Kevin pulled up and he called his pops and he's like, you need to check on Kerry or Carrie. He was like, mm-hmm. you need to make sure you're with them and just be with them because he doesn't sound like he's okay. Mm-hmm. And he gets there as soon as it happens. I don't know how true that is. I don't know if it's just Hollywood that wanted to make a good moment in a movie or not, but... Um. Like that to me, just regardless of that whole scene, that's mm-hmm. what broke me. I'm pretty sure it's pretty true that his dad, like, that he said something like that to his dad, yeah. and his dad just didn't. He's like, didn't you need, care. To, yeah. He said you need to figure out yourselves, right? Which is, it's just wild for a parent. That's crazy. Say. I mean, that's old school, but even even as an old school mentality, older, you know older what I mean? Older parents, like, that's you not shouldn't know better. I feel just a bad parent. Yeah, that's a bad parent at the end of the day. Don't. Mm-hmm. It is old school mentality, I feel, as well. Like, it's like, have some tough skin, do this, mm-hmm. do that. I understand the whole tough skin mentality. Like, I get it, but these are your kids you're talking about. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, you ain't, gotta have you ain't some gotta, compassion. Yeah, exactly. You have to have some compassion when it comes to it. And But as far as the him being, like, kind of being there when it happened or whatever, um, I think the way it happened was that he, like, knew something was, something gonna was, something was up, so he went to the house. To try to, you know, talk to his parents, whatever. And, yeah, that's where... That's where he just found the, he just found the body. Damn. Man, that's tough, dude. Actually, it was in, uh, just on the last episode that we had... That I had with uh, Ryan Grant. I don't know if you've ever seen that one or not. But um, I put a couple clips out there and we were talking about uh, death as well. And how... I don't know. I guess just how tough it is for people. Mm-hmm. And um, how it could really... It could throw someone off of off course of like their life, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like losing someone important to you like that, like that's what that's something that's like that's a I mean, fear of mine. A I lot know. of animals feel that, but like the way how deeply we feel is kind of um, is kind of like special yeah. to the primates because yeah. like apes, the great apes, and like monkeys and all of them like. How we're also primates too. Yeah, like they all feel lost really hard. You said feel lost. Mm-hmm. Oh, feel no, lost. Feel lost. Yeah, yeah. 
they all take it hard. The bonds between parents and children and yeah. siblings and friends and whatever, it's all really close. Like, yeah. like it, I think it's funny because when you think about it like that, like that, it just seems right because we're just humans. Like you know, yeah. Th- of course, we're gonna have bonds. There's communities, but at the, like at the basis of it all, like we're still just animals that are on this planet. Mm-hmm. Like we're not we're not inherently that special. Yeah, we, we're just like them. But we have that in us, that, that the way to make our relationships feel special. The emotions mm-hmm. that we are able, I guess, like to bring to the table. Mm-hmm. Um, and higher brain function, but <laughs> the main, the most, <laughs> the most important factor of the all, that's, uh, yeah. that's for another day. Um, I mean, off, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. And I hear a lot of time, uh, a lot of people refer to it as well as like you know we're primates you know we are animals and mm-hmm. uh i had a friend uh carlos who was talking to me one time it was like uh because i was venting to him about something he was just like yeah man um just telling me that like everything takes energy even like the good and the bad like even whenever you're in a bad situation in your life it's like that takes energy to be able to i guess like Cause you're just thinking about all the bad stuff mm-hmm. and when you're thinking about all the bad stuff you're not going to be in a good place and you're going to constantly like it, it's it's hard sometimes to like get out of bed mm-hmm. on those days where you're yeah. constantly thinking about things that aren't going right in your life and i think that is a easy hole for anyone to dig themselves into and um a very hard one to get out of exactly and it's crazy how easy i feel like you can get to that spot but how hard it is to get out of it mm-hmm. is like it's crazy how powerful your mind is. Mm-hmm. It's so... It can happen so quick. Yeah. And then it's impossible to get out. And it's... You need, like, a whole community help. No shit. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess maybe for some people, mm-hmm. like, that uh, need to go to, like, therapists and stuff like that. I've always thought about going to a therapist before at one point because I feel that they... You know what I'm saying? They, they went to school for certain things, but I don't want to be, like, I guess, like, another... I guess like another product of the system mm-hmm. where it's like, I don't necessarily think I need any kind of medication. I think it's just best to talk about these things with a professional and just get their professional perspective on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't think I, I don't care to, I don't need to do any kind of pills. I don't need anything from my emotions to mm-hmm. the chemical balance in my brain or whatever the fuck it is. Like, I don't need any of that. I don't need to mess up anything that is probably already <laughs> more messed up, bro. And yeah, I mean that, that too, but, uh, not even that just like specifically friends and family mm-hmm. just having those people there for you helps a lot too oh yeah I, I, the thing I've noticed about that is I feel like man like friends there was something that Tyler told me uh, way back when and um, I remember when he told me this in a way I kind of didn't think I can get this kind of advice from him I don't know how to, I don't know if that sounds mean or not, but <laughs> I just felt like I couldn't get like this kind of advice from him, you know, but mm-hmm. we we're just talking and we we're having a conversation and he kind of hit me with some stuff and I was just like, man, like for whatever reason that made me like just what he said made me feel really good. And it made me feel like, damn, like, okay, like, you know what I'm saying? Like just kind of move on from this and just progress. And then I remember one point I was talking to you about something and just like how you said, like, uh, rely- I made it worse. No. Nah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got, um, what do you call it? I got taken to the, I got taken to the fucking Arkham Asylum, bro. <laughs> <laughs> after, after you said what you said. Institutionalized. Yeah. <laughs> um, padded room. But we were talking one day in my living room and I was telling you, like, I guess how I was feeling. And you're like, you know what the crazy thing is, is that, uh, you're not the only one that feels this way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you weren't saying it in a way that's like, like tough it up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you were just like, other people have these same thoughts as you. And it made me feel a little bit better in a way. But that, also, like, I hate for anyone to have those kind right. of same thoughts. That's, that's a thing that helped me out a lot. And, I mean, it's different for everybody. But, yeah. um, like, feelings of anxiety and depression, the, the thing that gets you the most is the isolation like you just feel sorry for yourself yeah and you're like why do i feel like this this sucks like i don't want to feel like this blah 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 and then it's like but it's so common like everybody feels like that 
maybe to, definitely to different degrees. Some yeah. people feel it worse. Some people feel it less. Less. And it's like, but the thing is, m- millions of people out there are feeling like that. And so it's not, you know, it's that helped me not feel alone. Because that, like, the basis of what was, you know, what was wrong with me is something that I had to try and fix myself with therapy and um, other other things. Um, I feel that it's that way with most people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's a lot of, like, what... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you go. Okay. I, I felt like it's a lot of what, um, like what you're saying, where it has to do with, um, like yourself, things mm-hmm. that, things that people can't help you with. Yeah. And that's, I think is the toughest thing for me to wrap my head around sometimes. Cause sometimes you don't even know exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. Like you have to really do some, like, I don't know if it's just soul searching. You have to really like dig deep. I feel. I still don't even know what caused all of that anxiety and depression that I felt back in like. If, if it was bad, like, 2016 to, I'd say, t- about 2020. Oh, shit. 2021. So, did, did did COVID make it worse for you or no? No. I think that's, I mean, funnily enough, I think that's what kind of brought me out of it. Mm. Like, like, I haven't, I've had, like, one anxiety attack since then, but it's because I was at, like, the dentist, and they were doing all this shit in my mouth at the same time, and I just got overwhelmed. But like, this is a scary place sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it was just too many things. Um, I felt like I was choking. Mm. And that's why. Um, but like, no, literally before when it was really bad, I couldn't go out to eat. Anytime we got, I got to could my you go family. Out anywhere? I could go out most places. Not not but, everywhere. Sometimes I couldn't travel. Hmm. Traveling um, made anxiety. me anxious. Yeah. Um, going out to eat, I, I I could like sit there and chill with my family, but I couldn't eat physically so i would order before we like when we we're leaving mm-hmm. take it to go i'd order it to go when we we're leaving and then eat it at home or stuff like that so mm-hmm. it was like that for a little bit actually but i think um i think a lot of my anxiety and whatnot i think had to deal with maybe morality and like um morality as far as like morality mortality okay mortality and um maybe i was i probably wasn't where i wanted to be in life at that time Mm -hmm. but mainly mortality because um i don't know it was just a big thing for me back then like being scared of dying and whatnot are you scared of it now um a little bit but not as much i think everyone is to a degree yeah, and exactly what you're talking about right now, dude. That it's crazy, but that uh, life is but a dream album that I listened to. That actually made me less fearful of dying because, and it's crazy that I say that sometimes, uh, but it's just what it talks about in that album. It just it, it makes it seem like it's it's not such a scary thing. I mm-hmm. mean, he talks about how you're being violently ripped apart from the universe, <laughs> but I. I think that's only in terms of like your your soul in a way, you know, but it's not something that you necessarily feel. Mm-hmm. I think he's just uh he's expressing it that way himself, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um yeah, so that made me less I guess like fearful of it, but nonetheless, I mean, I think about it all the time. I think that's what makes me anxious the most is when I think about the people that I love the most not being here anymore and how sometimes I feel like I don't have enough time and just I hate that the way the world is designed because I feel that the way the world is designed, you don't get to spend a lot of time with the people you care about all the time because you have the job that is literally prioritizing your life. and Definitely not here, not in America. No, no. And so, like, I've seen a lot of, um, like, posts and TikToks about European people mm-hmm. vacationing in America, like, during the holidays, Christmas time, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, like, Literally, there'll be people in Europe off Christmas, the day after, the day before. They'll have, like, all these days off throughout the year for holidays. Americans just don't get that. Like, a lot of people work on Christmas. And yeah. Most people go back to work the next day. And it's like... And, like... And they're just like, when do y'all, like, not work? Mm-hmm. It's like, the working culture here, it's people work themselves to death. Literally, bro. Mm-hmm. And And... I like, like, I think that's another, like, old mentality that people have is, like, where you... I mean, don't get me wrong. You need to work, right? But right. 
I just hate the way it's designed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like it. That's something I feel like I think about on a weekly basis, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, bro, I hate this. I hate how it is. Like, I hate spending eight hours of my day here at this place that that I just, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like I could be doing something else with my life. And that's why I try to, like, that's why I'm trying to push this as hard as I can now. Because it's like, you get one life. And I'd hate to be on my deathbed and be like, what if, what, what, what would have happened if I had tried harder at this? What would I, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I feel like there's a lot of things in my life that I've had, like, I've just missed opportunities on because I was so in my head about things and so scared, I guess, to just jump, yeah. you know, and just not, just not taking enough risks. And I just like, man, I'm kind of just done with that, dude. I just don't want to be, I don't want to live my life like that no more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I. It feels good doing that, and and to add on to what you were saying earlier about uh, not being where you want to be in your life, um, at least at that point, this goes for anyone I feel that might be experiencing this, but one thing that's helped me out a lot is I feel like, I mean, whether it's God, the universe, whatever you believe in, Buddha, um, I feel that uh, you're never going to be at a place in your life where you're not meant to be. Mm-hmm. I feel like every pl- every position that you're in in your life, you're what? What's that mean? What's that mean? Oh, we got one. Mm-hmm. We got that's a clip. <laughs> uh, that's like what they do at poetry. <laughs> oh, for real? Mm-hmm. Um, I never been, but um, I feel that every position you're in in your life is there's a lesson to be learned, and that's why you're in that position. And uh, sometimes it's hard to see it that way, especially, you know, being the, the, the kind of beings that we are, you don't really think about certain things like that. I feel like you just think mm-hmm. about like, I guess what's in front of you and you don't really, you don't really think about it like it as like, Oh, this is, I'm in this position maybe for a reason. You have to look at it like a different way, because if you look at it the way that you're looking at it and you're upset with the way things are going, then you're always going to be upset. If you look at it like, man, I'm in this position because God put me here. The universe put me here for a reason. I need to figure out what this is. I needed to gain some kind of knowledge or some kind of understanding from this. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to help you in the long run for experience in life and experience to be able to give to others and your children. Like, I got you. It's like, instead of, instead of asking like, why is this happening to me? You got to ask like, why is this happening to me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of like, feeling sorry for feeling yourself sorry for yourself that's it's more pity. like like what like why am i in this situation what do i have to learn from it exactly yeah and it's not an easy thing to do especially you know, when it's a bad when it's a bad situation yeah. dude and you just like feel like you have nowhere else to go nowhere else to turn to and you're like i'm 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 stuck i don't know what to do but the, that's the time when it's like you're in this moment for a reason exactly that's when you need to i guess like try to understand it as best you can be like mm-hmm. i'm here for a reason just take it day by day take it slowly you know what i mean just literally like learn that, to- that's a big thing that helped me too a lot was realizing like everything happens for a reason mm-hmm. like no matter what you believe yeah everything it's going to happen for a reason one one way or another because like i mean i do believe that me and jennifer would have always met no matter what mm-hmm. but me going through what I went through not going to school immediately and then like going through all this and working at Walmart like that was just the like this version of me's path to meeting her exactly and like that's really where my future kind of starts yeah and it's crazy to think about it because I mean you say you feel like you always would have met her at some point Mm -hmm. but I don't think you would have no? No. Well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets up and walks out, dog. It's because there's so many little things. Like, there are places, yeah, maybe, places that we used to frequent all the time yeah. when we were little separately. Never knew of each other. She used to live in Shore Acres right down the street from where you... Are you serious? You were, yeah. What the hell? Like, across the street, across Broadway. Yeah. Over there. And um, her house got flooded and destroyed in Bro, Ike. She was closer than we realized, mm-hmm. than you realized. And then, yeah, she she would always go to that Walmart, obviously, because she lived at, off center right now. Mm-hmm. So, or <laughs> her address is no. Ah, uh, this man. But <laughs> so she always goes to that Walmart, goes this, this, and that. And so there, there's definitely been times where we've been in the same building at the same time, 
probably walked past each other, never knew each other existed. Yeah. I think that, um, I say that I don't think y'all would have met because I feel the same way with me and Mitch, how that happened. And mm-hmm. I think that the way things worked out or they were all worked out for a reason in the way that they're supposed to. And um, Taylor Swift calls it the invisible string. Is that what Tay Tay calls it? Well, I think it was called that already, but she has a, a song called The Invisible String. Was it off of the new album that she came out with? No? no. Lovers? No, it's off of Folklore, I think. Oh, Folklore. Folklore. It's one of the rules. Fo- fo- oh, folklore? Folklore. Oh, Folklore. 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 <laughs> yeah, no, right. Um, yeah, he, yeah, he told me it's one of his faves. But uh, It's a really, really good album. Which... Dude, t- Apple put you see Apple. I know to change it like a lot, but Apple put out their top 100 albums of all time. Did you see that? No. Mm-hmm. And she's on there. Yeah, she's, I'm sure she has more. I'm sure her whole catalog is on there, dog. There's only one. I really. Think. 1989. Oh. Uh, it's number 18. Number 18. Mm-hmm. 18th best album of all time. Oh wow. It's not even. What's number one? It's not even her best. Uh, the Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, that's really good, but I don't like. I need to get. I guess I need to sit down and really give it a thorough yeah, listen. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I'm not convinced it's the greatest album of all time. I can't say that either. I mean, what is my opinion? You know what I mean? But uh, Lauren Hill, I think, is very underrated. I think that was her solo stuff that that was on there. It wasn't when. Because if I'm not mistaken, I could be completely wrong. But I feel like Lauren Hill was with the Fugees, no? Who don't, am I thinking? Don't remember. I don't know who I'm thinking of. But we're at, that, we're at the time. Um, I noticed I didn't even give an introduction. But, guys, obviously, this is the podcast. podcast this is the conference podcast. <laughs> I'm Johnny G. And I got my guest today, Mike. Um, Mikey Ree. <laughs> Uh, I do want to appreciate you coming, Mike. I, honestly, it means a lot to me, bro. I appreciate you giving me your time, man. And I feel that this conversation was really good, dude. Honestly, I wish we could re- record longer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you didn't have that, that boy, Mike is on his way to uh, after this, um, cook him a 14 hour brisket. So y'all wish the man good luck. Uh, hopefully, he lets me get a plate. And uh, we will see you on the next episode. Y'all take care, guys. <laughs>